Cafe Chemistry. It's Wednesday, May 6th, and we're uh, back in business now with uh, acid bases. I'm on page 488. Can you be there, please? Page 488. We've got a neutralization going on here. When you do an acid base neutralization, you're going to have acid that has ions in it, base that has ions in it. And then you're going to have, when you pour them together, you're going to have ions in the uh, solution, but you're also going to have water. And water is more like precipitates out, if you please. And so it's the net ionic equation forming water. And I wanted you to know that. Let's go ahead and take a look at hydrochloric acid. That's a strong acid, aqueous. And we're going to put it with sodium hydroxide, aqueous. Now, this is what they make Drano out of, you know, a sink uh, cleaner, a drain cleaner. And this is uh, what's in your stomach. It's hydrochloric acid called muriatic acid at the store. It's much more concentrated at the store than it is in your stomach. And so what are you going to get? You're going to get this breaking off as an ion and contributing to the hydroxide ion. And what is H2O? It's water. And that's liquid, molecules. And then what's this going to form? It's going to form a salt. NaCl, not always sodium chloride, some form of a salt. OK, and so these are ions that are floating around. If you put this in water, going to break up into hydrogen ions, which quickly become hydronium ions and chloride ions. And if you put that in water, it's going to break up into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. OK, and then over here, the sodium and the chloride is still aqueous. It's still sodium ions and it's chloride ions. But like I said, the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion got together, formed water, so you don't break it up. It's a liquid. Now, what is it that is on both sides of the equation? Well, you've got, well, let's balance it first. Three hydrogens and one more make four, so I'm going to need a big two right here. And that gives me my two oxygens, and we got two oxygens. And we got a sodium ion, and we got a chlorine. OK, so what's on both sides? Isn't uh, chloride ions? And isn't sodium ions? So what's called the net ionic uh, equation is what's left. Well, what's left? It's this plus that forms that. I'd like to take a look on uh, 489 at the top of the page. The net ionic equation is the hydronium ions in solution plus the hydroxide ions in solution, because opposites attract, you know, yield two molecules of water. And that's what we've got right here. Now, what does it say? Neutralization is the reaction of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions to form water, water molecules. That's a definition of an acid base neutralization. So, what is the salt? It's water is not the only product of neutralization. You also get a salt. And a salt is an ionic compound composed of a cation from a base and an anion from an acid. You remember those terms? Cation means we're positive on cats, right? So, it's a positive ion. And uh, it's composed of Positive ion and base. Let's go find that positive ion. Uh, it's the height. Oh, the positive ion from the base is sodium. That thing. So that's a cat ion. And then what's the other thing? The uh, negative ion from an acid. The negative ion is 
fluoride, that thing right there. That's called an anion, a negative ion. So what is this form? It forms a salt. And there it is. Boom. And water. So that's the definition of the salt. Now let's flip it on over to page. We're moving pretty fast now. Chapter 15, page 513. Chapter 15, page 513. It's called acid base titration. And that you've got to be exposed to titration before you go to college, just so that it doesn't freak you out when you get there. It's not hard. You didn't need to. But in order to do titration, you got to have an indicator. And you can see this will come up over here in 513. We've got methyl red, bromothymol blue, methyl orange, bromphenol blue, phenolphthalene, and phenol red. Indicators are made from natural uh, commodities like uh, beet juice, and carrot juice, and blueberry juice, any type of juices, you know? Uh, they scrape material off of uh, lichen, uh, you know, that grows on trees and things and they make litmus paper out of it. Litmus paper is an indicator. They have blue litmus paper that turns red in an acid, and they have red litmus paper that turns blue in a base. Okay, and then we got hydrogen paper. That's a universal paper. Now let's go over to page 512 and see about pH. Do you see that colorful rainbow on the top of 512? It runs from zero to 14. From zero to seven is acids. And from eight to 14, sorry, zero to six are acids. Eight to 14 are bases and seven uh, is neutral. And that's what pure water is. It's all related to, relative to uh, pure water uh, pH. And so if it's acidic, it's gonna, you know, these, this universal indicator, like the uh, hydrogen paper, it can go acidic or basic. It's kind of a combination of these. And uh, it gives you a uh, scale, a range of pHs. You don't know what pH is, it's uh, hydrogen uh, power. It is the negative uh, logarithm of the hydronium ion concentration. Huh? Yeah, that's in chapter 15 at the beginning. We jumped right into it in the middle of chapter 15. We'll get back to that if we can. We've only got a few more days to be together. I've already used up about 10 minutes of time. And so I got to hurry here. So let's go ahead and take, uh, by the way, this is the salt. That's the water that forms in an acid-base neutralization. Okay, let's take some water, pour it in here. There we go, got a little bit of water. Let's pour it into this beaker, a little bit of water. Okay, good. And then with that, we're gonna put in a base. We're gonna put in a base. Let's go ahead and put in 20 drops of ammonium hydroxide. It's called ammonia, but it is loose. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 20. Good enough. But it's um, <clears throat> a household cleaner, it's called ammonia. And it's basic because it produces hydroxide ions when in water solution. Okay, so we call it ammonium hydroxide instead of ammonia. We let the customers call it ammonia, but we're chemists. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, bloop, ten. Uh, vinegar. Vinegar is an acid because it produces hydrogen ions in solution. Now we're going to go ahead and add an indicator. It's going to be phenolphthalein this time. Phenolphthalein indicator. By the way, this universal paper is simply a combination of all these other type of indicators all put together on one piece of paper. Okay, so this phenolphthalein, take a look at 513 and tell me what color is it in an acid? Well, if you look on 513, the picture next to phenolphthalein, it looks like they've got seven highlighted there because that's neutral. It looks like it's clear in an acid. The low pH numbers are acids, high pH numbers are bases. 
So it looks like it's clear in an acid and it looks lavender in a base. Let's see if that's true. This is the base side over here. Let's put 10 drops of pheno in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let's put 10 drops into the acid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. And so we're going to go ahead and see if it is, in fact, what they say it is. Well, look at that. The ammonia has turned pink lavender. And the vinegar is acidic acid is uh, clear. So let's take another little beaker here and let's put some of this in there. And you know what this represents? This represents a bunch of ammonia that spilled on the highway. So the chemist comes along and he brings the vinegar with it. And he pours it onto that ammonia. Ooh, cutting it down. And all of a sudden, whoop, got to be very careful because one drop of this can change it clear suddenly. And that's what happens. It suddenly reaches chemical equilibrium. It's not there yet. It's slightly pink. You can't see that, but I can. It's still slightly pink. And one drop, that's why we use a very delicate, precise type burettes in order to drop this in there one drop at a time if we need to because we want to see where the equivalence point is when it turns clear. Now, when it turns clear, it could indicate that you got neutralization perfect, or you got neutralization plus extra uh, vinegar. That's why you got to have a very precise way to drop it in there so that you hit neutralization boom, and you stop. That's called the end point. Of neutralization. What's the end point? It's when you have chemical equivalent amounts of acids and bases. Say that. Chemical equivalent amount of acid and bases. Say end point of titration. Say equivalent point, equivalence point. Okay, so that's what we're trying to reach is equivalence point. No extra, because if we did, we'd have an acidic solution. Right there, you should have salt and water. Salt and water. Will always ask me, can I drink it? Well, you got this thing going on called hydrolysis, and we're gonna have to talk about that some other time, maybe in college. Huh? Okay, so whoa, can, if we did that, can we go ahead and make it basic again? Okay, I'm gonna neutralize the acid. I'm gonna neutralize the acid. Looks like that's probably it right there. If you look on 513. What color is it when you reach the end point? What's in the middle? Pink, light pink. And that's what it looks like. This is what it looks like when you overshoot the equivalence point, when you overshoot the end point of titration. This is what it looks like. Dark pink. So then you, what do you have to do? You got to add some more vinegar and start over again. You go ahead and do vinegar and, and you do it very carefully until you get it dropped just right where it turns clear. See ya.